So today I'm adding something really pretty into one of my flower beds that I thought you guys might like to see um, because I think it does a couple of things. It brings dimension, some different texture, and also is a problem solver in some situations. So you can see I have this flower bed right here. There's a lot of stuff going on in it. Um, black lace elderberry, daylily, brunera, sweet woodruff. There's a dogwood here. I do have some lemon balm in here that I planted this spring and I've just cut it back, so it's pretty short. Um, but I'm gonna add a pillar and a container right here in this area because I think it will add some dramatic weight. It'll add some really interesting um, texture, interesting look to it. And I like to add those sorts of things. I mean, I've got a little whimsical bench kind of nearby, uh, which may or may not stay there uh, because we are planning kind of a redo of this flower bed next year. Uh, but I just wanted to show you the area before I had anything in it, because, you know, while there are some pretty plants and the lemon balm will fill in this area, but, you know, kind of to my left here, it's a nice filler plant that gets about this tall. I think having something really beautiful right here is kind of the way to go. So let me show you what I've got. So I've got all my supplies out here in the truck. What I'm gonna do is put this gorgeous pillar um, on the ground, kind of nested into that flower bed. And then on top of it, I'm going to put this container, uh, which I think is just beautiful. These are both concrete pieces, so they are heavy. I'll probably have to get Aaron's help moving the pillar in. Um, but I think that they are kind of an understated beauty. They're not like a glazed pot or something that really shows up, which in some cases works really well. Like if you're missing a specific color in the flower bed and you think, you know what, I need a pop of something in there, you could put like a teal pot or a red pot and then all of a sudden you've got some like glorious interest. Um, but I wanted this one to kind of look natural in a way. And then I'm gonna plant it up with this beautiful variegated Spanish dagger yucca right here, which gives us some really interesting structure very, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It kind of looks like an agave, but it's not. It's a uh, zone seven hardy to zero. So I will be taking this container into our greenhouse um, to overwinter, but then I'm going to underplant it with the Dichondra Silver Falls. I think it's gonna be a very soothing looking container. I don't want anything too bright. I want it to look just peaceful. So I think what we'll do is get the pillar and the pot placed and then I'll talk a little bit more about the design and the plants. Don't you think this added the perfect touch to this flower bed? Like it's perfect. The stature is great. It's not too big. It's not too small. And that's the thing, like the proportions mean a lot. You wouldn't want something enormous in here or something that was too dinky. And I think it adds so much visual interest. Like if this was in somebody else's flower bed, I would want to stop and study it and look at the design of the pot and the pillar, see what plants they used. I think this is going to be much more low maintenance than say like a fountain as well. Um, depending on what type of plants you use, I'm using some very low maintenance plants, which I'll talk on a little bit more in a second. But this pot is called the Garland Hardenier pretty sure I'm saying that wrong. We'll put it on the screen and a link down below, but it's from Unique Stone. I think the pillar is as well, but I'm not positive. Um, I got both of these down at my parents' garden center. And the best thing to do, if you're looking to add pieces like this, which these are beautiful and they're timeless, they're classic um, and they're real, which is something I love. And I know concrete's heavy and it's kind of a pain, but oh my gosh, the beauty of this is so awesome. If you're looking to add pieces like this and your local garden center doesn't carry them, um, I would talk to your local garden center about it because oftentimes maybe they don't know about a specific company or you know, oftentimes they can work out getting an order brought in. Um, but you can go to the company's website and they have dealer locators on them where you can put in your zip code. And when you do that, it will hook you up with the retailer closest to you that sells their stuff. So that way, maybe there's a retailer 60 miles away or 30 miles away that you can go visit and see what they have. Um, so so that's what I would do in that case. So what I'm gonna do now is plant it up. Now I'm not running drip to this container because the pillar is solid and it's heavy. Like Aaron um, actually lifted it by himself, which I thought it was gonna take both of us, um, but he lifted it over here. But since it doesn't have a hole going up the center, I would have to put my drip over the backside, which wouldn't really be a big deal in this flower, but it might be something I end up doing because you can't really see you might be able to see the tubing. I just don't like that when you can see it. So in lieu of doing the drip, I'm just using some very low water requiring plants. I am gonna use just my organic potting mix here, just straight up potting mix, nothing special in terms of like using a cactus mix or anything, even though these are kind of drought tolerant plants. Can get enough in there. It's kind of hard because the yucca's root ball is really big, so I might have to take some of the soil out but I am going to plant my dichondra first because this yucca is wicked. Like it's, 
the end of its little leaves are so sharp. And I wanted to plant this somewhere where Benjamin wasn't going to be venturing. Like I didn't want it to be too close to a sidewalk or anything. So this Dichondra Silver Falls, you guys, if you have not planted this before, it's amazing. It can take, you know, the same water requirements as a yucca or an agave. In fact, the first time I saw this combination, this was planted beneath a big like Americana. It was like a variegated yucca. It was so gorgeous. And so I'm kind of taking inspiration from that here. Um, but I'm just going to nest that root ball in there and just pack some soil around the sides. And I'm going to use three of these because I want it to be kind of a complete fill, but then I'm gonna leave a hole in the center so I can just drop the yucca down in there without having to mess around its leaves too much. So let me grab my second dichondra here. They're already draping really nice. I think what's what I love about this in this case, using it in this arrangement, is that this is a strictly weeping plant, so it's not gonna really do a whole lot of filling like upward, and I don't really want that to happen. I want the yucca to be able to shine and then just to have a little softness around the base. Um, so let me tuck some soil up around here. Got the third one here that'll come out the back, which honestly, like, you won't really see it. You will see it a little bit from the sides. It always feels a tiny bit wasteful when you plant something on the back of the container when it kind of backs up to somewhere you can't see. Okay, I gotta make sure that this root ball is gonna be able to fit. So see all the root balls of the dichondra, and then I packed soil in around them. I left a big hole here in the center. I still think it's maybe a little bit too small. See how I'm smashing the plant's roots a little bit? Plants are pretty resilient. I usually can get away with doing this. So I think I'm gonna grab this yucca and go out into the grass to take the pot off. So I have a little more room to maneuver here. Yeah, I don't think this root ball is gonna have much give in terms of like reforming to, to fit in there. Huh. Yeah, we've gotta, look at that, mercy. Is that a root? Oh no, I can knock some of this off. Awesome. Okay, I'm just gonna dissect this root ball real quick. Okay, so that's interesting. Is that how they get cuttings? Look at that. See that? That's like a big root and the plant comes off the root. That's really interesting looking. Gotta be brave with your plants. Sometimes you have to manhandle them. Perfect. Okay, let me come see from the front before I pack more soil. Since I removed so much from the root ball, I will have to add extra. But I wanna make sure I like the angle. I think that's perfect. A Little bit at a time. Ow, poked a couple times. Okay, now a little bit from the front. So I think it turned out really pretty. And the reason I picked out these plants, two reasons. First of all, low water users, because I knew about the drip um, and the fact that I didn't really want drip tubing to be showing. So um, once they are kind of settled into their pot, um, which I will be checking them here routinely, and I still will check them on a very routine uh, basis, consistent basis. Um, but once they're rooted in, they won't need as much water as say a container with petunias or um, you know some of your other kind of regular annuals. I also wanted this to kind of be a peaceful looking arrangement. And I think that I got that with these colors. It's nothing in your face. It's very beautiful and architectural um, without having to have a lot of color. So anyway, I just thought you guys might enjoy seeing this go into my garden um, and maybe take a little inspiration from this project for your garden. So thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.